Shalom, everyone. I hope that you're doing fantastic. Uh, I know that you can't see me if you're new. Sometimes I just go down this channel and I just chit-chat. Um, I haven't been on this channel for a couple of days because I've just been spending time with the Spirit and um, just doing some research. I don't know if, you, if you're listening to this. I, got, I guess it got uploaded. I've got so much here and I don't want to bring any type of... Uh, um, I don't even like to work, use the word confusion because uh, the most have truth is not of confusion, for one thing. At the same time, there's so much that I have questions about and have been digging and trying to find within Scripture itself. And I, I ran across a few things, and actually some of the stuff I studied a few years back and... Um, some things begin to come up in my spirit again about them. And um, I did go online just a little bit, <clears throat> but mostly I like to just listen to the spirit and then go do my own research and, and what I have at my table as well. But I want to talk about uh, a couple of different things. First of all, um, oh boy. Uh, well, there's just so much here, I don't even know where to begin. First of all, I want to talk about the law of Jehovah. Okay? Because he said that he wanted to make it honorable. Okay? The reason why so many things are taking place, first of all, in the land is because... Um, people didn't want to keep his law but I want to to talk about something that I found in Jeremiah and uh, which Jeremiah was um, speaking to the people of Yisrael who were backsliding and all that kind of stuff um, first of all in Jeremiah chapter 7 we're told that Jehovah stated to them that uh, let me go back up here just a second first of all in, in verse 19 he says do they not provoke me to anger saith Jehovah do they not provoke themselves to confuse to the confusion of their own faces therefore thus saith Jehovah ya Jehovah behold mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man, and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn, and shall not be quenched. Thus saith Jehovah of hosts, the Elohim of Yisrael, put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices, and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your Elohim, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsel of the imagination of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. Okay. Over here in verse 8, we're talking, Jeremiah begins to speak to them. And um, let's see, where is it at? Give me just a second. He's telling them, um, yeah, let me just go here. In verse 8, it says, that Jehovah, at that time, saith Jehovah, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Yehuda, and the bones of the princes, and the bones of the priests, and the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. And they shall spread them before the sun, the moon, and all of the host of heaven, whom they have loved. Look. People serving uh, the luminaries and all kinds of stuff. And and it, the divine is spirit for one thing. But anyway, it's saying that they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven whom they have loved. 
and whom they have served, after whom they have walked, and whom they have sought, and whom they have worshipped. They shall not be gathered nor be buried. They shall be for dung upon the face of the earth. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in the places where, whither I have driven them, saith Jehovah of hosts. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith Jehovah, Shall they fall and not rise? Shall, shall he that departs not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? The, the word backsliding here, uh, I don't know what it means in the Hebrew, but just the word backsliding itself, to slide on your back. Does not a snake slide on its back? Anyway, uh, they hold fast deceit. And they refuse to return. Okay, so whatever we are made of, whatever the Most High looks like, He's anything He wants to be, for one thing. Okay? Let me just say that as well. Anyway, what I want to get to is, so it goes on and it says, I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Every one turneth to his course, as the horse rusheth into the battle. It says, Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of Jehovah. And here's what I really want to get to, because he went back here and stated that he commanded them to obey his voice. Okay, he didn't ask for burnt offerings and stuff like that. Just to obey his voice of what he said. He go, Jeremiah's talking about how the scribes falsified the law itself. Okay, what I found here um, kind of shook me <laughs> a little bit. Um, but it states here that, that, that Jeremiah is talking to them. He says, how do you say that we are wise and the law of Jehovah is with us? Lo, the false pen of the scribes have falsified them and written them wrong. Okay, let me go. I'm reading out of a different version. Let me go to the King James version of that. It takes you to verse 6. Um. It takes you to a word when you look it up here. In the King James it says, How do you say we are wise and the law of Jehovah is with us? Lo, certainly in vain. That word in vain, Shekhar, I think is how you, anyway. It means they wrote it in shame and cause and deceit and a lie. Okay? And it goes on and it talks about this word pen here they made it the pen the false pen of the scribes that will take you to a word that the first thing it shows there is the word eight a t e like you eat something it it went back to swooping and flying they did it so that they could eat for one thing they did look they were doing sacrifices these people were worshiping the luminaries these people put uh, Judah it stated put their children through the fire that never even once entered into not 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 the not the spirit of truth that I serve for one thing he said listen to my voice for one thing he wants to make the the law honorable okay I want to talk about, I want to, I'm switching gears here for a second because I also want to talk about the word archon. It's found in the Greek and I was reading, um, now this is going to be very controversial to a lot of people, okay, and uh, not the word archon, but this 
in John chapter 12, we talk about, or we're reading about uh, Jesus, is what it's written. Uh, the, the, the Savior is Jehovah. But anyway, it, Jesus is speaking there, and he's talking about the prince of this world, and it goes back to um, Archon is the, is the word. Now, Archon will take you back to the Gnostics, okay? But I want you to listen to that because the word, because the divine had told me, don't dismiss phonics don't dismiss it because the spirit really does will bring truth in all kinds of forms okay spirit speaks expressively the holy spirit is um it, it's here to lead us into truth and all that kind of stuff. the word archon now when i begin to do uh was being led in, in the direction that i've been led on this channel for the last couple of years uh the divine woke me up and uh had me go this direction because there are people involved in serving Archon which will take you back to the prince and the ruler of this world okay it goes back to um, it really will lead you right back to the luminaries and things like that now in the tarot itself which we also can trace back to the Hebrew words at the root that have the pictographs to them and they also are connected like like the 15th letter of the Hebrew which is the sin or the Samach we know the 15th high arcana in the tarot goes back to the devil card same there because it's still sin and piercing energy and predator stuff Okay, we know that the devil wants to still kill and destroy. So there's the connection there. Archon. Listen to that. That is high arcana. The, the archon is still found there within that, which is still takes you right back to Hebrew language itself. Archon. Arcana. It takes you back. Um, the prince of this world went back to a chief, a ruler, the first in rank or power. Um, Cain, the, the word Khan, Cain, can still be found there in the phonics. Okay? Uh, this is why the, uh, this has to be gone. <laughs> this wickedness. If you go do your own research on Archon, uh, these, these are magistrates these go back to um to be first in political rank or power as well to reign or to rule okay the word for world is cosmos it goes back to being um it said orderly arrogant look at our leadership right now Anyway, I'll get into that. It also took us back to, so Cosmos had within it also a decoration by, implica by implication. The world including its inhabitants, literally or figuratively it stated, morally. And it went back to adorning, the adorning world. Well, that's decoration stuff. We spoke about that word decoration. It went and was connected to the dragon. Okay? It was connected to, um, the well, the word took you back to tannin. Right? We spoke about that here. Uh, a sea serpent went to, it was connected to monsters and dragons and whales and the marine energy was found there as, as, as well. Uh, so Leviathan, the wreath, okay, and we've got Jeremiah speaks about um, how people, w he literally talks about the Christmas tree itself, he literally, and I won't go to it, you can go find it yourself, but he literally talks about how they, you know, they, they, they put the silver and the gold on it, it, it goes back to adorning things, this word adorning also took us back to Peter, where he was talking about the women not, you know, not you know uh, the women plating their hair and and looking all the, look at the material world 
Okay, the prince of this world goes back to all these things, and it goes back to the first, the, the archon spirits. Now, that also takes us back. Um, I want to say it takes us back to the deluge. Um, I, I want to say that. Please correct me uh, if I'm wrong there. Which we know for a fact that spirit, if you don't have the Holy Spirit of truth, within you to do upright towards someone then you've got another type of a spirit in you remember i heard the divine tell me superficiality that goes right back to archonic type of energies okay this is a hierarchy uh, a monarch uh demi urge it went back to creator energy in the book of isaiah it speaks about I am the first and there's none beside me and there nor there will there be anyone after me and I don't share my glory with anyone and then we go to the New Testament and then we have um, Christ show up and in John it talks about if I be lifted up and all men lift me up. Now, I went to do a little bit of um, research on that. And it really, in Christ is saying that if I be lifted up. Now, we are taught that Christ is Jehovah. Okay? Look, I'm just bringing a bunch of stuff out here. Because it's important that uh, you and I find the truth of what's really happening. Because a lot of people are opened up to so many things spiritually. They sit in front of their TV. The TV is the Tav, which takes you to the mark in the Hebrew. It's the 22nd letter. We know that. Okay, 22 also takes us to death energy or transformative energy. That transformative energy. Uh, and I only know this because the divine allowed me to, to go this direction. Um, but it's also corrected me through the process of learning some things because we're so we're so blinded to so many things um to our hurt really because we're also told that that we're destroyed for lack of knowledge at the same time if we don't if we have anyway it will never be able to truly figure out all of the mystery um <sighs> this stuff is so deep let me go back so going back to Christ saying, if I be lifted up, that went back to being exalted and being high and to be over and to be above and beyond and across, okay? That goes back to, now there is a connection there that goes back to um, the king of Assyria, it really does, um, which we read about the other day when the Most High was revealing to us that he didn't think that it was really in his heart to take a bunch of nations and stuff, and it was connected to the the, consum the, uh, cons the consumption that is taking place and people getting eaten and things like that. Uh, but it was all, then he was going to turn around and get rid of the Assyrian, but it was all for a purpose to clear the land um, for uprightness. Like, because people really don't, look, just like Jeremiah just said, even the stork and the turtle and the crane, they had inside their self the law to return when it was supposed to. Either you have an upright spirit about you and it's set inside you and you've allowed the, the, the spirit of truth to um, uh, circumcise your heart or it is circumcised or it's not. Okay? Um, we've got this being told to us if I be lifted up which went back to being exalted and then Isaiah said that he doesn't share his glory with anyone nor is there anyone beside me but then the New Testament will go in and it'll state that the son is beside the father but we have in Isaiah saying no one's beside me okay this goes now, what I want to bring out, because this Archon stuff that's going on in the first and the last, and um, there's all this stuff that's told in Isaiah, um, is connected to luminary stuff, for one thing. And I'm going to show you, because, first of all, we have Jehovah speaking to... Lucifer here in 
four, in Isaiah 14, and he says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? What is the son of the morning? Now, actually, uh, I think a year and a half ago, I got on here and I spoke about, um, He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. In the book of Revelation, he tells us that he'll give us the morning star. Well, Jehovah in Isaiah is stating to us that he's fallen. How art thou fallen? Thou art cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, or Elohim. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will, will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and shall consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world, there's the world, which would take us right back here to the material world, which goes right back to the archons, which is connected to luminary stuff and Cain. Okay. At the same time, I just proved that the Hebrew language at the root of the uh, pictograph also is connected to the tarot. Anyway, well, we know, anyway, that made the world and a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. Now, we've got people in their houses right now as prisoners, and this is really unfolding, and there really is a spiritual war going on here. Okay? Um, stuff is so deep. It really is so deep. It says that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of the prisoners. People better watch out because if you don't open the house of the prisoners, your city is going to be destroyed. Anyway, all the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. First of all, let me go back to the book of Revelations because it stated that he was going to come and rule, that it says Christ was going to rule with an iron rod. Who has the iron rod? The king of Assyria has the iron rod. And yet, Christ means to be anointed. Let me tell you that in, uh, in this is, this is, the king of Assyria is in the hand of Jehovah doing this. He's doing it. Like we just read the other day, he's going to get rid of that after it's done. At the same time, he's anointed. The word anointing means the Mashiach as well. Interesting, huh? Really interesting. There's only one king of the universe that uh, really does inhabit eternity. And that is Yehovah. And we've seen it in the oldest book of the scripture that I brought up the other day. Of... Um, in Job where it states that there was a day that the son of Elohim came before Jehovah and Satan came also into him. And he asked Satan, where did you come from? And he said, I've been going to and fro and up and down in the earth. Okay. That, that's a fallen entity, a fallen being that's connected to, to the high archon, the Cain energy as well anyway this stuff is really deep and if this doesn't get your wheels turning i don't know what to tell you either the true law is inside of you and you walk by truth because we just read that people falsified the law okay in isaiah he says i want to make it honorable and he talks about hearing the voice the voice we do what the voice tells us to do and you and i either have truth on the end. look the law we're also told that the law was given because people were sinning we don't need no law if people are in the upright and you're not being a freaking hypocrite okay this material world stuff decorative stuff um hey look at me kind of stuff 
orderly, arrogant stuff being decorated. That kind of stuff. Now, obviously, there's nothing wrong with looking uh, decent. I, absolutely. Uh, I also find in um, scripture as well where they were hunting. We know that the, that the devil is a hunter of souls. And where they were being told to cut off these handkerchiefs and put them around the heads and stuff like that, so that they could hunt, they they would know who to hunt because they want th th these are cannibal energies going on. Um, this stuff is really so deep. I didn't really mean to go this long, but it, there is so much to this stuff. Okay, people who are in their animalistic state who have not had their heart or even called out for their heart to be um, cleansed by way of the spirit of truth and upright and kindness, okay? Whatever Jehovah is, he's whatever he wants to be. I mean, it's beyond us. Either you walk it in truth or you're not. Either you're calling out for uh, the Most High to come rescue you, or people are really, they're really, the, the, there's a big destruction coming. Really. What is the bright in the morning star? Oh, Lucifer. It's found right there in Isaiah. It's found right there in revelation as well now i want to also bring out something really quick when we read in the first chapter of revelation it states that he holds the seven stars in his hand the seven cluster of stars goes back to the palladians which the book of job tells us and is talking about orion and the palladians and Arc. Arcturus or however you say that which is the big bear in the constellation up there okay um, the Palladians were told had sweet influences who, who could uh, resist the sweet influences of the Palladians meaning so meaning that pe we already know that there are people among us that are influencers we know that there are people among us that are transformative we know all kinds of stuff okay who are we it really just boils down to following the spirit of truth and having the fear of Jehovah. now i do want to say one thing i did run across somebody's study last night very shortly who did a study on Isaiah that went back to, or it wasn't Isaiah, he brought this, he brought up uh, that uh, portion up where I'm the first and the last and all that kind of stuff, which is actually found in Isaiah. And it went back to Archon energy. He was actually doing a study on Archon, which took us back in history to the same portion that were found in the scripture. Um, obviously, we didn't create ourselves. Obviously, there's something that's guiding things, and we do what we're seeing all kinds of stuff take place right now, and it, it really is spiritual war. If this don't put a fear, not not like being afraid, at the same time, uh, we. We do feel that stuff. It, it is kind of fearful in a way, but we don't be afraid of it. If we have truth, then we are filled up to... Uh, our spirit is full and complete in truth. And we can't be moved. You can't be duped. You will come into places where you see things and have a complete understanding and uh, really observe from within and listen to a still small voice that says yes or no or you listen to a voice the voice the let's go back to the voice it is about the voice of truth which is already placed in you or it's not if it's not you're getting consumed we're already seeing that take but that is truth that is true who is the king of assyria who is anointed it says cyrus that word cyrus takes you to an eagle 
where do we have, he calls Cyrus his elect. Well, we have elections in America. What's going on right now? A lot. i got to get off here because it's going to kick me off here. Uh, just wanted to get your wheels turning. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Shalom.